studio with Jane Curtis, and she's going to talk about the 200-year the history of the bicycle. But Jane, didn't the Flintstones ride bicycles? Ooh. <laughs> well, either they were very much ahead of their time, or there's a gap in written history. That must be it. That must be it. That must be it. Some document somewhere chipped in on a piece of stone is right. missing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the, the first, the first uh, I've heard anything about it, goes back to actually to the uh, Middle Ages, the middle of the 14th, around the 14th and 1500s uh -huh. back there. And there's a story, there are stories that people were fooling with it and drawing diagrams and Leonardo da Vinci. Yes. Uh, who thought of just about everything else. And it's, it's possible, but nothing came of it course, as you see, and that, so it really, really doesn't count. Nobody was riding around no on a bicycle. No one was riding a bicycle. Or even had those very <laughs> early ones. But I think if we can, we're going to start looking at some pictures right away. Okay. Oh, please, everybody, you can describe these things, but you could never get the effect without seeing a picture like that. This is, I guess, the credit of being um, about the first one, a, a nice, nice version of the first one there. Um, the first person was a German baron named Karl von Dreis. Uh, and this was in the year 1817, 1818, around there. And of course, our country was always already well and going, and Illinois became a state in 1818. <laughs> I just happened to see that somewhere the other day. So uh, yeah, the world is, is moving along. Um, he uh, invented this, this machine. Um, there's a story that it's. It, it came about because in 1815, that was a year of no winter. Oh. Remember when a, a volcano went off somewhere very seriously and uh, corrupted the atmosphere so that light couldn't get through properly. But the story is at any rate that in response to that, the crops all failed. There were no crops. Oh. And in response to that, most of the horses died. They couldn't be fed. They had to be killed off and eaten or, you know, or just died. Mm -hmm. And that this spurred him on to admit. Now it sounds kind of like an apocryphal story, mm -hmm. but uh, whatever. He was working at it, and these were bicycles that were more. To my mind, they were more like two-wheeled scooters. Yeah. They were two wheels, all of them, because you didn't sit on a seat and pedal and sit up like this and ride or lean over a racing bike. Mm -hmm. What you did was straddle something in the middle and use your feet. Now, let, let's have uh, the next picture, please. Um, this is a sort of diagram, picture version, of what, how you would do the one we were just looking at. Uh -huh. And you see there, there's nothing really in the middle there. Uh, there's no steering mechanism. There are no pedals. The wheels uh, have, have no uh, uh, spokes, no shock absorbing spokes. For a long time, that was a problem. Um, but what you had to do was bestride this thing and run. But it would certainly um, help you get further faster. It would certainly help you get further faster and a small amount of uh, cargo, quote unquote, right. you could take along. But uh, let's keep that on there a little longer. Uh, the, the thing below is looking down on it from above. Mm -hmm. And you see it didn't, uh, it has rudimentary, what could have been a steering mechanism, but wasn't. Uh, it was just now, a handlebar to hold on to. Yeah, that was see that was about it. You can see in the picture there, and there's there's no uh, there's no chain and and, and sprocket mechanism right, link, right. linking the two together. The two wheels are the same size. Right. Uh, in 1819, somebody in England, well, he called this thing a Laufmaschine. A Laufen in German means to run, but right. it also means if you say we went walking in the woods, we sind im Wald gelaufen. You can use it for that sort of sort of going going mm -hmm. machine. Uh, with connotations of running. But a couple of years later in England, somebody invented one that he called a hobby horse, uh, or similar similar names to that. Um, and you worked it the same way. Uh -huh. It was based on the same principle. Um, if we, uh, we look at the next picture, uh, we can see the type of thing uh, that was going on there. Now, by eight, in 1839, this is a Scotsman up here, uh, and he is, 
has invented this, this one. You see, this one is quite different. It has a larger back wheel, and it does have a connecting mechanism. Mm -hmm. It does have pedals, sort of rudimentary pedals, and there's a seat because he has this piece not exactly connecting, but riding over the top, I think absorbing shock and so on. Uh, so he's, uh, you can sit up there, and this one, uh, the thing on the right, um, I believe is a lever. This is referred to as a lever bicycle. You could call it a bicycle then, you know, bicycle, two cycles. Um, you can see that, and the, the uh, hanging on, the, the, the handlebars, are, are very strange looking. So you, you wouldn't probably stick with those. But in the next picture, we see somebody uh, riding on one of these, or a drawing of somebody riding on it. Mm -hmm. And you can see again, this looks more as though he might have been pumping or something there right. to, to make it make it go. Um, and of course, the clothing of the day shows you it's back there in the, around the 1820s. Um, so the, where his feet are really almost looks like a stirrup rather than a pedal. It is. Pedal. It's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. In the next picture, we can see this thing, like a loop hanging down there, the mm -hmm. two of those. Mm -hmm. Those were hanging stirrups, as it were. Right. But, but once again, you see a little development there. There are more, more spokes. And there's this, again, this rudimentary seat, which looks as though it might have been a little more comfortable than the other one. And something sticking off to the right there, which again, must have been this lever mechanism. Mm -hmm. I imagine if one researched very deeply, one could get into that and find exactly how that worked. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the moment, at any rate, that was, uh, we, we can see how it was done. Right. Uh, in the 1820s, they kind of got away from the, uh, the bicycle, just the two. Uh, well, it, I w don't show any more pictures yet, uh, please. The um, uh, problem with it was that you had to keep your balance one way or another, right. or stand up the whole time. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't work on them so well that way. So they got into tricycles and quadricycles, quadricycles. starting there in the, in the 1820s. Uh, yeah, now if we can look, please, uh, uh, no, uh, back. Go, can you go back a little bit? Uh, yeah, uh, to, to go from this one then into the larger, of course your, your whole middle mechanism is going to have to change. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the, one, the one that comes next uh, is just somebody's strange idea of how you would do this. Now the seat is, is the, the bar goes, instead of on top of the wheels, this, this arrangement goes underneath it. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a seat sitting up there. You can imagine how stable that would have been. Mm -hmm. And something to lean on there. But again, this is apparently another, another lever one because see the thing sticking up there right. for that one. Uh, now as we go on into the 20s, uh, well, what we see an, another another version of that, and this just looks as though it's a heavy deal, and it is, because it's mostly wood. And later on, they, they got to putting iron to binding the wheels with iron, but a very very heavy mechanism. And this one has gone. I don't know if it's gone back slightly or what. This one I'm not, I'm not dated. I never saw a date for it. But either you would sit on that saddle-like thing in the middle. Uh, which again tends to start resembling the horse-drawn vehicles a little bit, and how how you would then go to the end. It seems to have pedals, you see, and what the item is that's sticking out in front, you can't tell. But if somebody put one of those in front of you and said, here, run down to the corner for <laughs> 10 cents worth of salami, you know, you would, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> how so, do I do it? So we will go on to the next picture. We will get around that problem. Now here is one of the tricycles. Oh. And a lot of these things still exist in museums and all. Ottawa has some, and all over Europe they have them um, in transportation so they museums. Sat between the wheels sideways instead of lengthwise. You sat between them there, and you had this front wheel, which in earlier ones did not have a caster. It it didn't didn't move. Um, the next picture shows somebody riding on one. So you did sit up over the bicycle then the way you did, and you were not frantically, you know, moving, pedaling with your feet 
uh, underneath. In fact, there was some compl uh, complaint in one of the tales of the older ones uh, that wore out your boots too fast because <laughs> you are <laughs> doing this. I'm mad. But you see, there he is. This seat now. His, his seat is jacked up more, but he's sitting there, and he's as the, the pedal is there, and later on, then they're developing the, the caster, and the you you could you could steer this. You can steer it. And much easier once the caster mechanism came up, but otherwise, you know, a little, a little tricky. Right. <laughs> uh, the next picture is an ad. I think this, this comes from a slightly later date. I'm sure it does, in fact. But it's an ad. Early bicycles were all called velocipedes, oh. which meant sort of uh, quick, uh, fast foot, you know, mm -hmm. quick foot. Uh, but the velocipede that some of us may have ridden on as children, uh, you see, it had developed to the point where it was much firmer, and you didn't sit way up over it like that, uh, <coughs> which was not uh, not all that safe. The bicycle never was safe, but it gets less space uh, safe as you're sitting up over it here, and as you're able to go faster. Right. Well, this is just a, a shot of what the, the solid tricycle turned out to be later. Now the next one is this wonderful picture. Oh. <laughs> this couple are sort of upper middle aged couple and they're out for a ride together on, on this thing. And you see it now has another wheel in, in the in back. The back. That wheel definitely has a caster. Uh, the, you're, you're steering way down low here, which may or may not have advantages. But if you wanted to go for a Sunday afternoon drive, uh, you either took your horse carriage or you got one of these. And early on, all of these things were strictly by, by the upper classes. Oh, yes. Um, they were, of course, ex expensive, or if you made one yourself, you had the leisure and the money and so on to, to get the things. But here is, is what riding a bicycle looked like at, at that point. So proceeding onward, we come to somebody now this here's this is a two-wheeler again but you can see that it's it's quite different now he's have uh, it, it looks like like handlebars close in handlebars uh, you see in fact he's outrunning the horse this may just have been the benefit of, for the benefit of the picture uh, but in the next picture we're going to see something that makes me wonder if it weren't one attempt at least to try steering the bicycle with a wheel, uh -huh. you know, the way, we steal, the way we steer a car with that. But the bicycle itself is much farther developed. It's not an early bicycle. So there's a little something to ponder over. Was, was this done and, and steered with, uh, with a wheel set somehow above the, the uh, handlebars, or was this just some, a, a trick picture of some kind? I don't think so. It's put forth as an actual one. And that previous picture where the guy is just like this, he, he, maybe he could have been like this with handlebars, but see, he wouldn't have been all that comfortable, I don't think. Right. So there's something else to ponder about in this development. It's not a very clear, traceable line as far as the details go. Uh, now we'll look at an, on the next one. And here is one that everybody oh, knows yes, about. Yes. And this had all kinds of names, the high wheel and so on. But the first and original name for it was the penny farthing. Penny farthing. Penny farthing. You can tell it was developed in England because the penny was a large coin and the farthing, which is only a quarter of a penny, is a small coin. Okay. So this was the penny farthing. And that was back there, of course, for to help steering purposes. Uh, and the, the, it doesn't show the, the step, unless the step is the thing sticking out on the left. But these look horrifically dangerous. We're not considered any more dangerous than anything else. And this became the standard, uh, let, let's keep that please, uh, became the standard bicycle. Well, you see the pedal there. Now, uh, I've seen somebody ride one, again on this show, The Pickers, one of the fellows on, on the History Channel, 
is interested in those things and has a couple, but you see him get up there and ride one one time, well, you have to hold it some way and get it moving. And when it's moving slightly, you use it to step and you bounce up and land on oh, this okay. little tiny hard seat, you know, and hope, you, hope your aim is good. Yes. Uh, but as you ride it, then you can see your legs would have to be long enough right. to reach the pedal. Uh, well, you can see the advantage of this because every time you did a, a round of the pedal, uh, you went much farther right. on this big wheel. Uh -huh. So that was considered to be a, a, a big, big advantage. Um, still, there were no balloon tires. See, so more spokes in here. And by this time, we've gotten up uh, 18, probably in the 60s. Um, we we're getting, getting beyond, we're getting ready to develop this. But it was, uh, you, you got farther for your effort, but also a slightly more comfortable ride. But if you hit anything, or if you put the brakes on too suddenly, there was nowhere else to go than right over the handlebars. Right, right. So they were considered very dangerous. Uh, and they were nevertheless manufactured in great quantities. And this spread around not only in England. England, France, uh, Scotland, and Germany were the four countries where it seemed to do the most. Mm -hmm. And I've seen reports that at that time they were being uh, sold in the United States and other places internationally. Um, in in other, other people's accounts of it, uh, they weren't until later, but I, I believe that they must have come in then, and they had a great vogue for a while. Mm -hmm. But they got so dangerous that the safety bike was invented. Uh, it doesn't look to us all that much safer, but this was around 1890 when that came in, and here is one of the first safety bikes. And it doesn't look very friendly or very comfortable. It's got it does those, have that, is that an extra wheel off to the right? Uh, there's a shadow. It just has the two wheels. But you see, the, the uh, it's gone back to being standard size wheels. Uh -huh. But look what else is there. You have the chain. And right. I guess they're developing into the into the sprocket. They're no longer using having to use wood for everything because metal has developed, mm -hmm. uh, and they can uh, they can make something like a fine chain out of metal now, mm -hmm. which reduces the weight of it. But in a way, that's not so good because you see here you have the the uh, this kind of rudimentary handlebar, and I guess the front wheel does turn. It didn't turn on all of them, but the the next the next picture shows us a slightly further development of that. Mm -hmm. And here again, you had a kind of double safety mechanism with the bar going across. And this looks much more like a, a current one, but the, the size of the wheels tended to go up and down. <laughs> I mean, in, in time-wise, sometimes you see the, the rear wheel bigger, and other times you don't. And the uh, gears began to come in, and in 18, 88, I think it was, the balloon tire came in. Oh, okay. Now this, of course, could reduce your speed, and racing bikes wouldn't be all that interested, but at least they had gotten above. Uh, now, this, this bike looks like a lady's bike, and that's what it is. And in the previous ones, uh, the ladies with, you can't imagine how a lady in the 1860s could have ridden a bicycle while wearing a hoop skirt or even done it one of those scooter type things. Right. But there was a beginning now uh, to consider ladies as part of the game. Protection and, for the skirt there. Well, and later on, we're, we're gonna see a picture in a minute here, not even that, now you, you look at the, uh, well, in fact, here's the next picture now. And in this picture, uh, the lady on the left is wearing a kind of a satiny, you know, fancy outfit. The lady on the with with uh, what they refer to as bloomers. bloomers. Nowadays, bloomers just just makes people laugh. But she's wearing bloomers and she's wearing either boots you know, or lace-up boots or some mm -hmm. uh, footgear there. And she's talking to her friend who is wearing the standard stuff. And the friend looks a little and, put out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's sort of, well, what, are you, what do you think you're doing? Right. Well, what a horrible uh, outfit. Uh, there's a caption on the bottom, but I have not been able to read it, because if you bring it up large enough, you, you can't read it. Uh -huh. But the next picture is another sign of the times. This one is an embrocation. This is not just for ladies. This is for anybody, because you, you rub this on your 
bruises and bumps and you know stiff muscles and all that. Uh, but it's a picture of a lady with her bicycle, looking as though she knows what to do with it. You know, standing there holding it by the, the handlebars and, and all. somebody has fallen off the and bicycle. And somebody <laughs> else has fallen off the bicycle. Uh, but it shows you at any rate that women were really getting into the game, uh, and bicycles were accommodating to it. Mm -hmm. So that uh, tells you something else, something else good about it. Uh, this picture I love. Uh, I th think of this as the Victorian children. This is somewhere along in the 70s or 80s when the, the big wheel had had its demise, but you see the little girl on the right has a safety bike. She has the handlebars and the, and the small tire, and uh, she, she's not, she doesn't have big wheels behind her. The little girl in the middle, however, is on a trike. Uh -huh. And you can just see the wheels there, and she's just sitting there with it, and she guides it with this thing in her lap. Uh, more reminiscent of the reins, you know, in, mm -hmm. the, in the horse vehicles. And the little boy on the left is also driving a safety bike. Wheels are the same size now. And you can't see here, and you don't see a, well, that might be, a, couldn't be a gear control, but gears have come in meanwhile, and that means that you don't need a huge wheel. You can set the gears and get much more distance for your, for your pedaling when you move down there. Uh, I love that picture. I think it's really cute. I mean, it's on family album. Now, this picture is on a, from a shelf in Madison Green, <laughs> right here in Lowell <laughs> Green Spring. Yes. And what it is, now, uh, tandems came along somewhere there, too, after the metal got strong enough to do it. But this is not a tandem, but you have these two ladies, uh, one of them wearing a skirt. But see, she's not the one doing the pedaling. She's the passenger. And the other one is uh, pedaling away. Well, she's actually, she's wearing a skirt, too, I think, now that I look at it. But they're, uh, they're riding along merrily, and I asked the folks whose uh, shelf this is on if they were particularly bicyclists, and they said no, or he said no. <laughs> but anyway, this shows you how, how the culture of the bicycle is definitely with us. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the bicycle, I think that's the last of our pictures. If, it's, if, if there's, there might, no, yeah, there's one. That was the last of them. The uh, use of the bicycle, became much more something, uh, a utilitarian transportation vehicle, mm -hmm. or movement vehicle, because before that, as I say, the, it had to be uh, rich boys or the baron, right. the, the time, the money to experiment with it. Um, and then when it came along after, it, um, well, after it went through the phases, it started out just as two wheels of the same size, went through these other phases, and then came back to the two wheels, but with various projections. The bicycle, uh, the kickstand came along much later. That came along in our day, in the uh, 1940s, I think. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there till then. I guess you just had to lean it against right. something. Right, put it down on the ground or lean it against the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But along about, uh, well, I said in 1890, the safety bicycle came in, the balloon tires had just come, and in 1900, a lot of refinements around there began to be made. But then came the automobile. And that was taking a lot of the attention away from the bicycle riding, because you could go somewhere, uh, carry more goods or whatever you wanted to carry, sure. more passengers in, in, your, uh, in your car, in your automobile. Uh, along about 20s, let's see, after World War I, uh, some changes started to be made. Children's bicycles came in. There had not been bicycles made small for children up until that time. And they began to be used much more uh, commercially. I know it, one, one of the times when there was a, a, I guess it was just a shutdown of power. Anyway, Wall Street, uh, some uh, other parts of New York were put into a panic because they couldn't communicate. Oh. And what did they do? They reverted to bicycle, the bicycle club. Bicycle clubs had become a big thing all around the world. Uh, they went to the bicycle club, and this was actually 
gave rise to the messenger service, mm -hmm. which still exists. Which still exists. Sometimes yeah. you see pictures of heavy traffic in New York all stopped up on right. the bicycle, you know, right. nipping, nipping in and out. And the bicycle club uh, is a very useful thing. I, I have a, a nephew who has various problems, but he's had to change area a number of times. And when he gets to a new area, the first thing the kid does is join the local bicycle club. Oh. He meets people, he goes on rides, he's a big boy, and he's very, very good at bicycles. So he's a, a positive asset to go along. So here it is, a social function mm -hmm. other than just recreation. Right. In the war, World War I, they were in use somewhat, but nothing in particular. They weren't as widespread, I don't think, in, in just civilian use either. Mm -hmm. But in World War II, you had whole bicycle corps. Oh, really? Um, now these were not, they were not a thousand <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for one country or anything like that, but they existed and for things like the French Resistance, women apparently, I've read a couple books on that subject and they emphasize the fact that the bicycles and the pigeon incidentally, the pigeons, right. were invaluable for getting around the, the occupying Germans mm -hmm. and they still tended, unless they had evidence to the opposite. They, they still tended to uh, look less suspiciously on women than on, than on men. But the um, environmentalism is another advantage it's had because right. look at all the publicity now about ride to work. Right. Share the ride. Uh, bicycle Getting scans. our bicycle lanes where it's yeah. safer. Mm -hmm. And when you hit them if you're not careful, I still think those are terribly dangerous. Oh, yeah. There's no warning for you that there's a bicyclist behind you. Right. But they, and all over the world it's like this. In fact, some countries have accommodated more than others. Germany, again, in particular, where I think more people still ride to work. I know when we went to Germany in the uh, early 50s, we used to say that they seemed to drive their cars like they did bicycles. They were just all over the place. Well, sometimes, and of course, <laughs> as fast as they could go. But you know, they didn't learn as teenagers the way we did, right. and they weren't used to it, and they right. simply weren't mature drivers. But uh, environmentally, anyway, it not, not only got people to stop using their cars, mm -hmm. but it had an effect on the, on the cars themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was quite a, the development of the bicycle was certainly never going to outpace that of the automobile. Now with all the gears. But and nonetheless, and there were places, of course, you, you, you couldn't, couldn't get with a car mm -hmm. where you had to take a bicycle. Right. Right. And it seemed to me, wait a minute, there was some other thing, some other point that I'm forgetting. Let me see if I have we're that. We're winding right. down, so. Oh, we're winding down, mm -hmm. all right. Um, Oh, um, bum, 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 what was that? There was another thing. Oh, yes, yes. I was going. <laughs> I was going to. How could I forget? This has to do with feminism. Susan B. Anthony was quoted in 1896. She was interviewed and asked about the bicycle, and she said, "Let me tell you what I think of bicycling. I think it has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. <laughs> I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a bicycle." on a wheel, she called it a wheel. On a wheel. It gives woman, women a feeling of freedom and self-reliance. And this calling it a wheel, that's the name, uh, another one of the names by which it was called. And we knew an old man, he had been a superintendent of schools in Chicago at a time when my mother briefly had taught in Chicago, in the schools there. And he called it a wheel. He was a great big pompous fella. <laughs> and he always drove, drove around. But he, he, was, he was very nice, actually, mm -hmm. under it all. But he'd call it a wheel. He'd say, yes, yes, Josephine and I, when we were in Rome, we, we took a bicycle. We took a trip by wheel up the <laughs> Arno or something like that. So it's a, a thing of many, or there were many names in between that I didn't mention either. And there was somebody who took um, uh, not, the, not the classic hobby horse with a rocker, but you know, there were later some with wheels mm -hmm. on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He took one of either kind of those and put, uh, must have been four <laughs> wheels <laughs> at, the, at the end there, uh, bicycle wheels. Uh -huh. and heaven knows how they would have been connected and managed. So, and that, that is given as a, uh, <laughs> but, but let me tell you about the one bicycle wreck I know about, okay. and that was one in 
Glasgow in Scotland in the early days. It was written up in the newspaper. It didn't say how many wheels the bike had, but it was back in an era when it could have been any, any of the above. Uh, a bicyclist ran into a pedestrian, and the bicyclist was fined five shillings and let go. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> I think we'll go to announcements. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jane. That's been very interesting, and I think if we have a bicycle, we need to get out and ride it. We do.